Well, mm. I wanted to ask you just briefly as well, um, comments from the Foreign Minister Penny Wong that Israel should walk, work towards a ceasefire with um, Hamas. Mm. There's a lot of criticism for that because Jewish groups are saying, well, this is a terrorist group. Mm. Is it wrong to call for a ceasefire between a sovereign nation and a terrorist group? Well, I think when you think about ceasefire, and I know there are a lot of people saying ceasefire, ceasefire, but the fact is that a ceasefire is actually a process of negotiation between two parties uh, to uh, see an end to a war. Uh, and I know that, you know, I think everyone wants to see a ceasefire. Everyone wants to see an end to this war. Show me a person who doesn't want to see an end to this. Uh, I think the most immediate pressing issue is while working towards a ceasefire, because currently neither party is willing to come to the table, which is what a ceasefire requires, while working towards a ceasefire, and Penny Wong has said this, that we need a humanitarian pause, and Australia has called for a humanitarian pause. There are to pauses enable food. and there are daily yeah, And ones. there are pauses in, in place at yeah. the moment, I mean, yes. I mean, the issue is as well that Israel has is if there's a, 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 a pause, even if there's a, you know, a pause of all fighting, all military mm. action, that Hamas would rearm, and Hamas itself has said they want October 7 to happen again and again if mm. they can. So you'd understand why Israel would say, no, we don't want to give you time to, to rearm, for want of a better word. And I would say that the people of Gaza, uh, the children of Gaza, are not Hamas, are not Hamas. And so, you know, um, I think that that is a point that is missing in, in the points that you're making, mm. that the children... Uh, and the innocent people of Gaza are not Hamas. They're not, but it doesn't mean that Hamas would not spend that time rearming. Um, that's a difficult. That's a difficult point that you make. And but that's what and, they would and, do, isn't it? I mean, they and, said we would we would want October seven to happen again and again. That's the words of Hamas leadership. So if they could make it happen, but that's the vex. That's 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 why this issue is so vexed because you have two parties who are unrelenting. Who are unrelenting? Do you put them and on so, the same so level? I mean, one, on... one is a terror group, according. To and one is a fully militarised a, a state with a full military. I mean, I've seen you've seen in in Gaza whole neighbourhoods razed to the ground. Mm. You know, um, the number of the number of children who are killed. Targets, That's what terrorists it? do. And I think one of the things that that we need to think about here mm. is how do states states respond to terrorist groups. I mean, we have uh, protocols in place for war, mm. but what are the protocols in place to respond to a terrorist so a, group? A Do you protocol? just go in and, and and kill all the civilians and hope that you're going to uh, get uh, get a couple is, of Hamas Israel's, in the, in the process? Israel says that there are lots of targets it doesn't take, so it assesses civilians around it, but if it wants to take out a target, it might do it anyway. Mm. I mean, it's the issue as well because we've heard from a lot of countries, including Australia, Israel has a right to defend itself. Mm. But also, let's not have civilian casualties. Now, no one wants them. But if the own, if every time they fire on any military target, they're going to have civilian casualties, does Israel really have a right to defend itself? I think how they defend themselves matters. Um, you know, are there opportunities, or is there a possibility uh, for surgical procedures to go in and um, and and? Uh, you know, specifically target Hamas um, When you say surgical, or, you say really precise operations. Precise operations as opposed to, I mean, I've seen pictures of bombing of 28 apartment buildings in a suburb. Uh, that's thousands of people left homeless with nothing but the clothes on their back. Where are they to go? Is it also going to be the case that you'll never have zero civilian casualties, the nature of what Hamas does and how it shields... It's military you know, targets. I think I think there are international protocols and international rules of war that recognise that there will always be civilian casualties, hmm. but that that very clearly state that uh, states, sovereign states like Israel, have a responsibility to ensure that uh, they uh, proceed in ways that, it, at the very least, minimises civilian casualties. What we're seeing now. Upwards of 10,000 people dead, uh, many, many of them children. Um, I, don't, I don't think uh, the world can accept that. Just finally, um, protests in Caulfield. Mm. Was that incendiary to do that near a synagogue mm. at that time, mm. a, a time of, of 
within the Jewish faith, faith where they're having um, celebratory meal as well? Yeah, I, I, I do think it was a mistake. Um, I think, you know, we live in a country where people are entitled to peaceful process, uh, to peaceful protests, but what I would do here is to reiterate the words of Sheikh Shadi, uh, who is the head of the Australian Council of Imams, which is uh, the leadership of the Muslim community, and his words were to call for uh, civil discussion, acknowledging that we may disagree on, on things that are happening overseas, but to call for civil discussion, to call for calm, and to call for everyone to proceed with uh, um, civility uh, mm. towards each other. Even if there's a protest, not to do it in the most incendiary manner I think, possible. I think, I think, I think that is uh, pretty okay. common sense. Anna Lee, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.